Because here's the thing, when you go out and spend and you shouldn't have spent, you need to write down, why did I do that? What was, what, what was I feeling? What time of day was it? Low energy levels, this is, this, I deserve it, I need it, those types of things. So again, if you track your budget, your time, and your emotions, you become more self-aware. It's not the daily tracking. It's not the weekly tracking. It's the thing that says, I must be all right because I'm still wearing what I used to wear. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I mean, sure, it's a little snug, it's a little tight, but the truth of the matter is the numbers don't lie. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. <laughs> you know, I'm crazy. Hey ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm so excited to see you guys. Oh my goodness. Hey family, welcome to Living Her Truth Show. (laughs) Welcome to Living Her Truth Show. I'm so excited you guys are here. This is my very first recording in front of a live studio audience. I guess I can say studio yeah. audience. <laughs> yeah. I'm super excited about it. But yeah, welcome. Live Her Truth Show. We have honest conversations between sisters on what it means to live your truth authentically. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard, and I am here and ready to have another moment of truth with you to help you build the confidence that you need to walk into your greatness. Why did I sound really, really staged right now? (laughs) So you guys, I'm super excited about tonight because on tonight, we're gonna talk about exercise and financial discipline right before the holidays, which is super important. I have Janice Will Wright Griffin here, who is a financial coach and also a- Certified retirement counselor. Certified retirement counselor. So I wanted to talk about it because obviously the holidays are coming up. New year is right around the corner and a new decade. Did you guys notice it's gonna be a whole brand new decade in 2020? Yeah, so are. whatever we spend this holiday season, I don't need us paying it off for the next 10 years. Right. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about financial discipline, get behind the whole mindset, you know, behind finances yes. on tonight. Cause you know, money tends to be a little bit taboo and we're gonna shut that down today. We're gonna talk about it on today, mm-hmm. all right? So I like to start off every conversation with just talking about how I come to know the person I'm talking to. And Janice and I actually met at Diva's Day, Kim Macy's event that she has every year. Kim is the executive director of Women Cultivating Greatness. And at her event, we met. Yes. I've met a whole lot of people through you, like seriously. But um I was a vendor at her event and I was selling my book and Janice came over to the table. So I asked him questions about my book, then bought a book, a couple of t-shirts. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> and so, yeah, we just stayed in contact every, every since. And I found out about this location because let me tell you how it's so important to have, you know, just to be good to people, right? right. And to network and support other people. Jen is here. Were you here at Microsoft? Yes, I was. She was here at Microsoft, overheard an event that was going on, and the speaker canceled at the last minute. And guess who she texts? She texts me, girl, they need, a, they need a speaker. Are you available? I was like, absolutely. Yes. And so she was actually talking about me in a room that I wasn't even in. That's why you need to be good to people, right? Yeah. And support other people. Yeah. Yeah. And so I ended up having a speaking engagement here and just had the great idea to have the recording here live. And I'm just like, why not? Let's do it. So thank you once again. Let me thank you in front of everybody because I thank you privately. Well, let me thank you publicly. You're thank so you so welcome. much. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Cause I was nervous, girl. When I, I, text, I, text, I text my crew like, whoa. <laughs> but no, it was it was 
is huge. So, Janice, thank you so much for having this conversation with me tonight. You're so welcome. Now, tell us a little bit more about you and your business. Okay, what I do is I teach women. I actually educate them as well as empower them how to take control of their debt, as well as manage their finances and build a legacy. And I think it's real important that we do build a legacy while we're living this life. And actually, I use biblical principles on how to do that. Because a lot of times we try to separate it because money is a very shaming thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because it doesn't, you know, when you look at someone, you cannot tell that they don't have it going on. And as our culture, we try to pretend we have it going on by the things that we adorn our body with or the vehicles that we drive, the places that we attend, our associations. So um, what I love about Lakita is the fact that she really believes in getting it real. And I tell her too, you know, to know yourself is to really know your money. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell everybody, there's no shame involved. The yeah. only thing you need to do is just get it right. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So let's start off with talking about mindset. And you guys, this is going to be an interactive conversation. So if you guys have questions, please feel free just to speak up and ask questions because financial coach here, get your questions answered. Okay. But why do you think, in your professional opinion, why do you think we go into enormous amounts of debt during the holidays in particular, as if, especially parents, as if we haven't been spending money on our kids all year long, right? Why do you think we wait until the end of the year to get into so much debt? Do you think it's a mindset thing? Well, it's a couple of things. Um, first of all, parenting sometimes can be a lot about ego. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have a whole lot to do with you and your child and your family, but it's, it's, it's ego. And so when you're around environments, yeah. as we talk about mindsets, and you hear somebody find their child the whatever station, I won't mention that in Microsoft. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the whatever station um, that's currently going for $400. Yeah. And you're thinking, okay, well, I can get this on Black Friday. But if you couldn't afford it in the first place, being on sale means nothing to you. Right, um, right. You so preach. going into that jet, as well as you have to think, in the past probably 15 years, careers have taken us to the point in place to where you don't just go to work and come home. Yeah. You either bring your work home with you, or you're staying late in the office. So then we have that time deficit that we're dealing with about not being home when the child gets home from school. So there's a guilt factor. Yeah. Because I'm not spending yeah. the time. Let me throw the cash. Yeah. And so those are things that really motivate us to go into what I call Pinterest poor. Not Pinterest poor. Yeah, that's we, a new one. We chase them at Pinterest. Oh, Everything yes. that's on Pinterest. Everything that's on Pinterest. But we're really we're really going into the poor house chasing that Pinterest look. So what I tell parents is, you know, the, st the financial stability is really one of the greatest gifts you can give your child at any time. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you don't want to do, the average person spends well over $1,100 a year over their budget to go into debt for Christmas. And so if that's placed on a credit card, it's not a simple $1,100. So that's just something we have to consider that how long are you going to pay for something? And what I tell individuals, especially at one point, somebody had um, invented one of those QP codes. Um, and that person is it's no longer available, but it used to be where you could go up to it. You could actually scan something mm -hmm. and it would tell you how many hours you would have to work in order to pay for that. Hour. Really? And I think if more people looked at it that way, yeah they would have a real understanding as to not only what they're giving, but what they're actually doing with their finances. And my only, the last thing I'll say on that is this. If you condition your child at a very early age to receive gifts that are in the four and $500 range, mm -hmm. what in the world are you gonna do with them when they become a teenager? Because they're, they're used to getting that level 
of gifts. Mm -hmm. So we really need to curtail that spending and teach them about money. Yeah, yeah. How do we how do we do that? Because you know, most times we are buying for a child because we're making up for what we lacked as a child, mm -hmm. right? So how do we like shift that that mindset? Right. Well, what I remember um, as a child, my mother was a nurse, mm -hmm. and my father was in the Air Force. For as long as I can remember, my mom worked double shifts, and my dad worked two jobs. And so, as children, we were very careful as to what to ask for. Because there were six of us, but what we knew from that is if they gave to us, that means that they weren't giving to something else. So having that honest conversation with children about what things cost, because when I was raising my children, I told them what the mortgage was, I told them what the grocery bill was, I told them, and I even made them a part of it. We had family meetings, we discussed those finances, and they would say things like, Mom, this weekend you said we were going to Chuck E. Cheese. And I said, you're right. Then I saw that food in the trash, and the lights were left on. They need to know that their actions have consequences because we are working with a family budget, right? Mm, so if there's good. a leak over here, mm -hmm. it's got to be plugged over here. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to give them the assumption that everything's okay because they say things like, well, mom, if you need money, just go to the bank. <laughs> mom, if I want it, why not you, easy. Exactly. Why don't yeah. you just use the credit card? Yeah because those conversations are being had in front of them, but not the other conversations. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is explain to them. I taught my kids, your report card is your first paycheck. Yeah. So if you have a bad report card, that means no paycheck. I don't pay for grades. Mm -hmm. I pay for performance. And I never gave my kids allowance. They earn commission. I <laughs> <laughs> <Not> earn commission. <laughs> All right. So, so because what that did is that brought them into the process. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. nowhere else will they get free money. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. So, so why condition them to think that they're going to get free money all along? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when we talked about um, as they got older and and college savings, I told them I am to participate in your college education. Mm -hmm. not to pay for your college education. Mm -hmm. So your participation is grades, extracurricular activities, those mm -hmm. types of things, having it on the horizon so that they can see that it's coming. Mm -hmm. So those are things I think we have to do because you know what? It's the teaching. And you have to teach them how to make it in this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's real good. You know, Candace, who's, who's checking us out online. Hey, Candace, Carol, thank you for tuning in. She said that she didn't want her kids to feel left out. She just wanted them to feel happy, right? Because as a kid, you know, you in school, they want to talk about what you got for Christmas and stuff like that. It can be a little bit embarrassing because I know I was embarrassed sure. as a kid, sure. you know, not getting anything for, for Christmas or the gifts getting, you know, taken because my stepfather was a drug addict, so he stole the Christmas gifts before Christmas came, so we had to go through that a lot. And so it was embarrassing sure, as a sure. as a child to get picked on for not getting Christmas gifts. So like help the parents out here. Like what are you supposed to do? Because I can totally understand, you know, Candace's viewpoint, because as a child, you know, feeling, you know, left out and bullied or whatever, you know, give me those five hundred dollar gifts. Like <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know, that feeling never goes away. Yeah. Because even adults face what they call FOMO. Yeah. yeah. Fear of missing out. So what we have to do is we have to explain to them where their situation is, what's available to them, mm -hmm. how, how they are more than their belongings. Mm -hmm. So it is, it, it, it becomes, so the peer pressure comes from other parents for us and other kids for them. So we have to discuss how do we deal with that peer pressure um, because no one person wakes up and has everything that they want. Right. So I don't think we just need to escape it. And of course, we, want, you know, you hear the saying all the time, I want to give them what I didn't have. Mm -hmm. But I also say, you know, you get your muscle from your hustle. 
<laughs> like that. You get your muscle from your hustle. So it's just, I, it, it is a tough, I will tell you, I never dreamed that being a parent would be as hard of a job as it is. <laughs> and, and, and as ongoing oh, yeah. as it is. But you know, it's just, it's just a constant life lesson, life review, you know, circling back, going back to basics, um, making sure you build them up and affirm them, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that they're not bullied. You know, all those things are just a parent's responsibility, but we have to teach them that. Who I'm in fear of are the kids that are never told no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're the ones that are going to suffer even more because yeah. they're the ones that, yeah. that may not be chosen for the team or may not be picked yeah. for the job or the promotion and things of that nature. And and that too is a building muscle. You We have to teach them how to handle disappointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we only have so much in terms of resources. Right, right. So do you think self-awareness plays a part with our, or positively or negatively affects our relationship with money? Because I think that's something that we need to get to the root of, our relationship with money. Why do we feel the way we feel about money? I think one of the reasons, it, it depends. A lot of times if you were born, let's say, in scarcity. Oh, yes then security mm -hmm. is hugely important to a person mm -hmm. who came up in scarcity. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I said, the, the child that's never been told no, they have very limited restrictions. Mm -hmm. So in terms of self-awareness, what I tell everybody, you know, when you financially coach, your life coach, because yeah. it all goes together, this is just money. It does. It all goes together. But I tell people there's three things that they need to look at in terms of self-awareness. You budget your money because again, you have a limited supply, oh, right? Mm -hmm. You also need to budget it your time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you're not budgeting your time, it will cost you money. If you're late to work, you get fired. Mm -hmm. If you are late on your bills, it will cost you more in, in, in payments. So you have to budget your time. You also have to budget the time that you commit to other things. Because if you're not, then of course, you run down your energy levels, those types of things. And then of course, you have to monitor your emotions. Why? Because a lot of us emotionally spend. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that I tell everybody to do is, um, which I heard, there's a one coming your way for those of you in the live audience is to track everything, right? Because here's the thing, when you go out and spend and you shouldn't have spent, you need to write down, why did I do that? What was, what, what was I feeling? What time of day was it? Low energy levels, this is, this, I deserve it, I need it, those types of things. So again, if you track your budget, your time, and your emotions, you become more self-aware. And the great thing about money, I tell everybody this as well, it's a lot like, you know, when we haven't been to the doctor in a while and we haven't weighed ourselves <laughs> and we get on that scale. Yeah. And then we go, oh, is that right? <laughs> I've been wearing the same clothes. Not, not realizing your zip has been screaming for about three months. <laughs> right? But again, it's not the daily tracking. It's not the weekly tracking. It's the thing that says, I must be all right because I'm still wearing what I used to wear. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I mean, sure, it's a little snug, it's a little tight, but the truth of the matter is the numbers don't lie. The paper won't lie. Mm -hmm. And you just have that. And here's the funny thing. And the main reason people won't do it or don't do it mm -hmm. is because at this point in time, you're comfortable lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's deep. Yeah, that's deep. You know, for me, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys. I'm gonna tell you guys a story. So you're right. It takes self awareness to really, you know, get a hand on your finances and notice and see what's in your bank account and what's not in your bank account. And um, also, you said that um, you worry about the kids who never is who's never who, who never tell no to. Right. 
also probably means worry about the kids who always hear no. Correct. Because I was a child that always heard no. It Correct. was never any money for like anything. Yeah. So one of the things for me growing up, a, a pain point was shoes. Because my mama couldn't, you know, buy me new shoes every year for you know for school. So if I got a, a pair of Nikes one year, I kept those things clean, like cleaning them with the toothbrush and everything. Yeah. Because yes. the next year I probably wasn't going to get a pair of new shoes. Right. So as an adult, guess who developed a shoe habit? Absolutely. <laughs> my shoe habit was was off the chain. Wasn't it? My husband looked at me crazy because <laughs> on, our, on our first date, we came to the Gallery Mall and I, no, West End Mall, and I made him buy a whole bunch of shoes. He spent like $100 for shoes. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I developed this this shoe habit, and so when I decided to go to Paris for my birthday, okay. I wanted to go to Paris and London and Germany. Nice. I wanted to pay for the trip, you know, without using my credit cards. So I was like, how am I going to do that? So it took me looking into my finances, sure. and so I realized that I was buying probably like eight to nine pairs of shoes a pay period, not like, no wow. lie, no joke. I was buying that many shoes per pay period coming to the coming to the office, you know. And so I realized I was buying, you know, that many pairs of shoes every pay period. And I had to ask myself, why? Yes. Why am I spending so much money on shoes? And I realized it was because I was making up for what I didn't have as a child. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I was like, okay, let me dial it back on, you know, buying shoes. Mm -hmm. And the only way I was able to stick with it, because I went a whole year without buying shoes. And nobody even noticed because I can literally yeah. wear a different pair of shoes for like two months. And not wear the same pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. So I went a whole year without buying shoes in order to pay for my trip. But because I was working towards something, because I really wanted to go to Paris and shop and right. not put it on my credit card, mm -hmm. I was able to save that money and use it to, you know, to buy, you know, to pay for my trip. Mm -hmm. And you know, and since then, I mean, I went back to buying shoes, but not at the level yes. that I was before. So now I'm just like, it's all about quality. Yes. You know, let me save up for a nice pair of shoes once sure. a year. And then when I started my business, guess what fell to the wayside? Absolutely. <laughs> my shoes so I can pour back into my business. But that took self-awareness. That is correct. You know, and it took a willingness for me to say, I want something different. But I had to replace that habit with something else. <laughs> so is that a positive? I mean, I guess it, it seemed positive in my situation. But what about somebody else? Because I could have easily went into a whole completely different habit. Correct. So do you think that's a, that's a, a good thing to do, to switch one habit for another like that? Well, you have to look at your motivators. Like I said, you knew that you wanted to go on that trip. So for that being your main motivator, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I say to, you need to often trick your mind. You know, the hiding the potato chips in the pantry kind of thing, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. Um, because sometimes it's, um, it's what you need to do to, to get to the next level mm -hmm. until it becomes that habit. You know, it's the putting the gym bag by the door and then walking past the gym bag like I did. Mm -hmm. But eventually, <laughs> I'm going to pick it up mm -hmm. and I'll put it in the car and I'm going to get to the gym more than every now and then. So it, you just really have to put things in place. And then here's the other thing, too. Because your brain gets bored, you have to constantly change the game. Yeah. Whatever that game is, you have to, you have to constantly say to yourself, um, I remember I used to drive a lot for my last job, and I used to go to Huntsville once a week. Mm -hmm. There was a restaurant in Huntsville that had farm-to-table food. They had the best hamburger in the whole world. I mean, whole world. Because the beef came from the farm, the vegetables came. I mean, the, they handmade the bread. And then, to make it even worse, that was the son's side of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. The mother's side of the restaurant was handmade candy. Wow. And she made white chocolate turtles. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would stop this location to eat my hamburger, and at the time there were four people in my household. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is buy four white turtles with the intentions of um, letting everybody else have them. My family has never had those <laughs> Ha <laughs>
I literally had to change my driving route into wow. town. Wow. Because I'd be in the parking lot. Okay, I'll, I'll, I won't come next week. Uh, I just, just all this blah, 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 blah stuff that led me right there sitting down saying, a number one? <laughs> So again, I had to change my habit mm -hmm. because it was it was pulling me, you know. And so, and, and here's the killer part about it: the burger was like fifteen dollars, and the candy was like eight. I mean, it wasn't no. I mean, for a burger, you know. And so, I had to say to myself, you know what? You really need to stop this. And so, again, changing the habit kind of re reinforce the vision that I wanted mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you do have to put things in place. Yeah. And sometimes what we hate the most, if, if you find that people are having a horrible self-awareness or a horrible time transitioning, mm -hmm. is when they've been pushed into that transition. Okay, so how do we, that's a good point. So how does somebody save and be financially responsible without feeling deprived? Well, you are. You are gonna feel deprived. I think but we don't want to. Though. We don't want to. Here's the thing: we keep telling ourselves, "I will comfort you and take care of you in every measure. You will not feel any pain or discomfort." And that's not life. You are gonna feel deprived when you're going to die. You're gonna feel deprived when you go on. You start a budget. You're gonna be deprived. You know. You just. You know. When you start. When you decide you're going back to school and you work full time, you're gonna be deprived because you got to yeah. study and not yeah. or hang out with everyone. It's just. It's just a fact of life, and you can't you can't put lipstick on that pig. It's not pretty, even with the lipstick. Even with the lipstick. <laughs> so you got to make it up in your mind that you're going to go through that process, and and you have to tell yourself ahead of time. That's why a lot of people um, start their New Year's resolutions a lot earlier because they allow themselves some failure time to go ahead and get it out the way. To go ahead and get it out the way. So I consider October 1st, mm -hmm. instead of the holidays, is Halloween. 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 I'm looking at what didn't I achieve through the year? What can I still get done with for the last quarter? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to do to get in preparation for the new year? Mm -hmm. And there's some things that I made a decision to just totally take off my list. Like one of them was learning a second language. I got enough stuff to do to where I don't need to beat myself over the head about learning that second language at this point in my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and it was a self-made goal. Yeah. So I can unmake it. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people just, they, they keep saying, I don't want to feel the pain of having to change what I need to change. Mm -hmm. and, and all that means is you're just not ready. You shouldn't beat yourself up or... You just say, you know what? I thought I was ready, but I'm not ready. Question from the audience. No, please. I just wanted to know, is that like is that described as complacency? Ooh. It can be. I was gonna... it, and it depends on the priority of the goal. Like there's some things that, um, like again, my, my learning a second language goal. Won't hurt anybody if I don't do it. You know, I won't get fired. My kids won't suffer. But if it's something really important, like I keep paying my bills late and they're going to turn off the lights. My kid goes to open the refrigerator and there's no food there. Then that's when you have to make the decision. I'm still going to continue with this behavior regardless of its impact on other people. And even that's an honest conversation with yourself as opposed to, Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have enough money because they don't pay me enough at work. And if everything wasn't so expensive, then I wouldn't have to deal with this. And just on and on. That's, that's when I think we're looking for external circumstances to comfort us in our own dysfunction. Mm -hmm. mm. So, was there a pivot, so with that being said, was there a pivotal moment in your life that helped you to change your mindset around money? Because you're absolutely right. So my parents divorced early. I was uh, 14. Uh -huh. And as they were going through their journeys of who I am and what am I doing and all this and all that, we were just kind of left to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So 
What that did for me is it made me think, okay, then I need a job. So I went and got a job at 14. I felt that I would never be in a position again where I would have to ask someone for my essentials of life and have them not provided, that I would work for them. At 15, I bought a car with no driver's license. Girl, stop playing. Because I had to have a car to get back and forth to work in school. So it was self-sufficiency that made me realize that I needed to be able to take care of myself. So when I enrolled in the, um, what they called VOE, What's that? For you young people, that's uh, mm-hmm. vocational office education classes in high school. Okay, I don't know what that is. Where they would go and find you a job. It's oh, still the work, the work, work study. study. A work study, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I knew that I wanted to work, when I had the opportunity to work at a bank, mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And what happened in that, in that banking environment mm-hmm. was that there were all these people that were just ahead of me who kept saying, well, Janice, you know, rich people buy used cars. Poor people buy old, buy new cars. And I was like, what? I'd come up with my little Burger King bag from lunch, and they say, Janice, rich people bring their lunch. Poor people eat out every day. And I'm like, what do I care? Because <laughs> I'm a kid. But it was, it, was, it was those little nuggets that just kept coming. And I kept thinking, okay, well, maybe... Maybe I can stay here and work and make more money and take care of myself. Mm-hmm. So not having any direction and not having any understanding, I just knew that there were some people that were willing to impart into me, mm-hmm. even though others were not. Mm-hmm. So throughout my life, what I've done is I've just constantly been blessed with people who've crossed my path, who gave me information and I'm, I'll just never forget, you know, because when I left high school without going to college, I went to the Bradford School of Business. I was a Bradford grad. Y'all heard it on the radio. Um, so that I could get into those big tall buildings downtown mm-hmm. that had tuition reimbursement. It took me 20 years to get my degree. So the first thing I did once I got in the financial world the Series 7 was one of the hardest licenses you could obtain. Yeah. So since I didn't go to college, first thing I did is ran and got a 7. Mm-hmm. Then a 6. I mean, then a 63, then a group 1, and on and on and on and on. And so when I started to go back to school and I made that decision to, to finish before my son graduated from high school, I really put the pedal to the metal mm-hmm. when he was in the 10th grade and graduated before he did. He's your oldest? Mm-hmm. He's my oldest. But that... That scarcity that that we spoke about earlier, Mm -hmm. that depended upon self, Mm -hmm. which I had, always made me the overworker be at work. It made me um, the person that was grateful to be in the room, but I didn't know that I should be in the room because the question was always, where did you graduate from? What school did you go to? And I would say, well, I haven't finished school yet. Oh, my gosh, you're running this and you're running that and you're so smart. And and, and all of that played into a part to where I just said, I got to keep hustling. I got to keep running. I got to keep overperforming because I don't have this degree. And I, and I knew I was paid a pretty penny for somebody who didn't have that degree. Right. Did you spend and go into debt to, to look the part? Because that's because most people, because you're not the only person who's in that situation. And most people will buy the BMW and get the big house and the Armani suits just to look a certain way so nobody will ask them that question. We are a family of Hondas. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't actually spend the money. And then, of course, and you know this, when, when you're younger and relatively slimmer, you can throw on anything in the living room. <laughs> Seriously, you know? So um, I just had a good eye for things. Mm-hmm. And so I was just smart um, with my money. And it's a, a funny story um, I can tell you 
um, about my husband. Um, when we first married, because again, I was in the business before we married, and so every day we'd be talking and about money and finances, and he said to me, you know, I'm telling him how he needs to put in his 401k, and he's looking at me like I'm cuckoo crazy. And so about two years in, I come home and he goes, hey, you're going to be so proud of me. And I said, why? He goes, today I enrolled in my 401k. And I was like, that's awesome. He said, yeah, one of the guys sat me down and explained it to me. <laughs> Okay. Really? <laughs> really? So it just goes to show you that um, sometimes we have to be very comfortable in accepting what our role is. And he thought, I need to have all of my money to, 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 to be able to gain access right now. Um, he, he just, he didn't have that level of understanding. And I tell people all the time, they say, well, you know, my parents didn't teach me. And when I refer back to that, I say, well, listen to, listen, look at it this way. Your parents were in a mode of survival. So yeah. the most they could show you is a little bit beyond survival. It's our responsibility to go beyond that point. Yeah. You know, because again, the tools were not there, the things were not available. So now that we're at that point, that's why I say the conversations that happen at the kitchen table in the family meeting mm -hmm. are crucial. Mm -hmm. Because I can't even imagine, because I really feel like the good government jobs that got us to our level of wealth that we are at, our children will not have. Mm -hmm. Pensions are eroding, 401k matches are eroding. They will not have the level of success as, and, and the career trajectory is, is, is dwindled. You know, millennials spend maybe 2.5 years at a job and then move if and that. move and move and yeah, move yeah. because there's there's nothing waiting for them further at that ladder except for more work. So as the diminishment of um, employee benefits, mm -hmm. which was a crucial part of my wealth building, will not be available for my children. So not only do I have to teach them mm -hmm. what to do, I have to teach them how to manage it. And I let them know, if they are not good stewards of money now, and I mean this, they will not receive the inheritance. Mm -hmm. At least they got an inheritance to receive. Yes. Because a lot of us don't have that. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's start saying, there. If, if you're not willing to learn, it's, it's, it's the story of the talents. Yeah, they have to know how to manage that money so that it goes beyond them. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. It's not for them to receive a fancier car, mm -hmm. you know. Because I, again, if you think about it like this, another thing I I often say: when you wake up every day, ask yourself, who am I making rich? Is it Mr. Starbucks? Did you see him three, four times a week? <laughs> Is it Mr. BMW? So if something happens to your car, will you be able to repair it because of the type of car it is? I mean, who are you financially making rich? And who makes money off of you? We don't want to answer those questions. Yet. I Come know. On. Mm -hmm. have a question. Yes. So I have a question that um, I call it a season of savings that I do twice a year, and I'm in my season of savings now. But one of the problems is, is going to the extreme. So how do you mm. find that balance? Because right now I struggle with any time I spend money that I didn't plan, I resent it. Oh, yeah. I get upset, I get frustrated, and I get to the point where I just was like, I want to cut everything out. I don't even want to buy a Christmas tree because I feel like I am not sticking to what I said I was going to do. So how do you find balance? You don't take stuff all the way to left field. That's a good question. Well, I think it's, um, it's something you have to keep in the forefront of your mind. Like, for instance, um, I don't write big checks well at all. You know, when I went to go buy a new car, I, I drove a car next to the car that I wanted to buy. Then I would say, I don't, I don't know, not today. And it's so funny, my husband told the guy, you're going to see her about eight, nine times. <laughs> Just leave her alone. She working it out. 
because I don't spend money well. Now, I don't deny myself or deny. I just make sure that it is a good use of my money. That's what I say to myself. Is this a good use of my money? Does it support me spiritually, financially, emotionally? Is this financial decision something that's going to add to my life? And then you can say, you know what? If I have a Christmas tree, I can enjoy the Christmas tree for the season. Process. Um, you just you just have to say to yourself, what can I what how can I enjoy this? Because not only do you have um, we have a limited time span in terms of how long we're going to live, how well we will live. And so for that, I think you need to reward yourself with certain things. And then you and then you just replace it. Because again, it is money. Something I tell my clients all the time, most people think money goes like this. Money goes like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your credit score goes like this. And if you're a person that's just only driven by the balance in your checking account or savings account, you will not be happy. You will not be happy. Yeah. You know, what a, because I know you uh, had a question before. You know, Donna, that's something we all battle with, with other areas of our life too. Because I know even with me, we're working on a business, if I don't meet a certain deadline, I beat myself up. And then it's you guys who be like, Keisha, I see you random text. I don't know what like, Keisha, I see you doing your thing. And I'm like, oh, am I? Because I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Yes. So sometimes we don't see the progress that we're doing. So what I have to do is remind myself of what I've already accomplished up to that point. Mm -hmm. So even though you may, you know, not reach your savings goal, you know, reward yourself or compliment yourself for what you've already said. Because I'm pretty sure that was probably a struggle <laughs> in and of itself, whatever amount that was, right? So just, you know, reward yourself and compliment yourself for what you already, what you already say, what you already done. Because we can relate to that on so many different Absolutely. levels, just in general. Okay. Um, I just want to say you had a comment from Facebook Live. It's from your sister. Uh, she said you have to set goals for yourself and have a vision of where you want to be. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so my question is also about um, balance. Yes. So I hate debt. And so I'm like, basically when I moved here, I came from, the only debt that I had was student loans. Mm -hmm. And I had to get a car and then I didn't have to get a house, but you know, it, it was cheaper to have a house than it is to pay rent. So with all of that, I'm trying to figure out a balance between paying down my debt and investing in my business. And mm. so that's where I'm like struggling because I'm like, hmm, should I do this thing to kind of like push my business forward or should I just keep like throwing money at the debt? Good question. Now, is it just student loan debt? No, I have multiple types of debt. Multiple types of debt. Okay, the way I like to rate debt is a lot of people believe in no debt. I mean, just none. Well, I believe in debt management simply because most people will never have the money to buy a whole house, pay for an entire college education, things of that nature. I consider that good debt if it's at a reasonable interest rate. So credit card debt, is not good debt. Um, sometimes if you can have um, a business loan, let's say, and it's at a reasonable rate, and your business is producing enough to pay the payment and will allow you to go to scale, that's kind of debt, but it's also an investment. It's an investment into your business. So what I say is just do not overextend yourself because what when you overextend yourself, what you do is you remove options. And so there may be an opportunity for you to partner with someone or do something else that may cost you some money, 
but you've overextended yourself, so no, therefore you can't take advantage of that opportunity. So what I say is just monitor it, manage it, make sure it's at a good um, interest rate, and by not overextending yourself as well, you will also avail yourself to um, having good credit in order to make a loan, in order to take care of any you know needs should you have them. But a lot of business owners, what they don't know is that um, for business loans, that's totally viewed off of your personal credit. So a lot of people don't know that, so they, they jack up their personal credit, then they wanna go and open a business and get a business loan. They're like, I'm a minority business owner, I'm a woman, and then, and your credit is jacked. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is keep your personal finances intact, and then if you need that, it'll be available to you. That's a good question. Anybody else have any other questions? So how do you start when you've never even had a budget? How do you start? Oh, that's a good one. First, we deal with all essentials. Most people blow their budget on three things. When I say blow, they're not able to achieve because it is food, transportation, and housing. Those are our three markers that um, can really kind of overextend us. So what I tell individuals is with your budget, there's a couple of things. It needs to be done. No more, I'm thinking about it, I want to do it, do it. Number one, do it. Number two, it's never going to be perfect. Most people want a lovely Excel spreadsheet that they can copy month after month after month. See, you, you, you. Yeah. See, yeah. yeah. Because I, 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 I do spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> and line items. <laughs> but you're not. You're not going to have the same budget. And the reason I want you to do, I, I propose to do a proposed budget than an actual budget. Because here's why. Remember the games we play with ourselves when we want to get motivated to do something? We play those same games when we don't want to get motivated to do something. So we say to ourselves, I don't spend that much money going out to eat. But you don't, you don't count the coffee and hash browns yeah. at McDonald's. Yeah. You know, you're only caught counting the larger items. So I say, write every dollar down. And then when I say get the trends, because if you need tags in February, car tags, but you didn't need them in January, you've got an additional expense that you did not count on. So with your car maintenance, um, if you take all of your physicals in June, and that costs you an extra $50 copay because you're going to see a specialist as opposed to your $25 copay. Mm -hmm. So those are things that leak out yeah and so what i tell individuals is start with just a plain excel spreadsheet and i can send you a sample budget please do yes i will <laughs> you guys email me i'll email you one back and you just put theirs there but let me speak on for a moment while i have you guys to talk about the holiday budget and what happens there remember when i talked about budgeting your time your energy mm -hmm. and all in your money mm -hmm. A sneaky thing happens during the holidays, okay? What we don't do, and another reason, so even if we're not overspending on gifts, which is what we covered earlier, what tends to happen is we say to ourselves, well, I'm going to the ugly sweater party. Oh, I don't have one. Let me go buy one. I'm going to the gala. Let me, I, didn't, I, I don't have one. Let me buy one. Oh, Secret Santa at work? And then it goes on and on. Oh, but you know what? You're stepping I, on my toes. I'm having Christmas dinner at my house. My table only seats six. Let me run down the gallery furniture and see if I can find one. That's, now, what that new table got to do with Christmas dinner? <laughs> <laughs> or, you, or, you, or you know, we need to paint inside here. All these other things come along just with what we call the holiday spirit. Yeah. And then what we end up doing after that point, is we are so stressed out and frustrated because at that point we say, I know I've blown the budget, I'm not even gonna think about it, I'm gonna just keep on, I'm gonna run on till I get it done. 
And and that's <laughs> not. And then of course, again, managing time. Remember I said time. Well, because I'm working so much, I don't have time to cook. So let me order that fried turkey and that honey baked ham. Not the one at the grocery store because I ain't got time to cook it. Uh-uh, Popeyes. Popeyes. Popeyes do it too. Mm-hmm. But those are things that we 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 kind and we don't include all of that into the holiday spending. But if you're writing down every dollar, I also brought you guys um, a a 52 week challenge because remember I said the average Christmas spree is about eleven hundred dollars a month. If you start the first week in January, you'll have that money for Christmas. And it just goes to show you what you should be putting in the bank every week. It's a nice little spreadsheet. And, I, and like I said, I brought it in paper form so you guys could have that. And if you really, if you're that person that says, you know what, at the end of the year, that's when we're traveling to see my family. And so I really have less money at the end of the year than I do in the beginning of the year. You just flip it around and start from the 52 week and work backwards. And then by the time Christmas is here, you only have to put in a dollar for that week. Hmm. So That's the, smart. the thing about it is it's small chunks. The, the thing is, is that what happens is we get so conditioned into believing we need to make huge changes. And if I don't make a huge change, it doesn't matter. We need to make small, gradual, consistent changes yeah. and then have movement. Yeah. And that's all we need to do. And for those of you who, who are not really good with spreadsheets, because Jeremy's not good with spreadsheets, Mint.com is really good. It's free. And you can just like um, link it to all your accounts, credit cards too, and it would automatically tell you when you have you know spent over your limit, when a bill is due, you can set budgets right in Mint.com. So that's another good. Credit score is also there. How um, accurate is the credit score in there, though? It is very accurate. Okay. It is very accurate. And while we're here, let me talk a minute about credit scores. Um, you can, everyone gets their credit score from Credit Karma or mm-hmm. a credit card. Mm-hmm. Um, some of those scores are the Vantage score. Nothing wrong with that. They're just educational. But if a lender's going to give you money, it's based on your FICO score. Uh, so, so you have to be sure, and sometimes they can be as different as 20 to 30 points difference between those two. So sometimes that's why you get that shock and say, wait a minute, I thought I was better than this. So yes, I like mint.com. Um, and for those of you who email me, I'll give you the websites of the other things I'm fixing to mention. Um, one of the places that you can also get a free credit score, that's also a credit simulator, like Credit Karma is credit wise and it's a product by capital one and what it does is it tells you your credit score and it, it'll tell you if you do this action it will improve your score so you know you can do the simulator to see that type of thing um, also for those of you who are just really interested in savings um, capital one as well as alliance and a lot of there's a lot of products out here that, that have what they call ida accounts and that's ida it means individual development account. And basically what they do is a match savings. So if you um, save a certain amount, they will save you a certain amount too. They'll re- return that to you in your checking or savings account. But it can't be an account where you put it in, take it out. It has to be an account where you put it and you build it. And I think some of the terms are like six months, summer, year. But if you're interested in savings, and you're going to save anyway, why not save so where somebody's going to reward you for saving? True. Right. That's another initiative. Absolutely. So, okay, Christmas is what? Coming around the corner. Black Friday is next week, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what if we haven't saved already? What 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 can we do? Because it's tomorrow, it's here. pretty much. It's here. Yeah. It's here. Um, one of the things I think you really need to do before you do anything else Get realistic about your budget. Before you buy anybody anything, get realistic about your budget. How much am I going to spend on this? And if there's some people that are used to getting gifts from you that are no longer going to get a gift from you, you need to have the conversation. And it can go something like this. You know, I'm really trying to get my personal finances in order. And what I've decided to do is cut back on gift giving. I hope you understand. That's it. So you you just you just lay it out there. 
Um, some of the other things that you can do is be creative. Say you and your girlfriends go out all the time for the holidays and y'all are papados and you're loving it. Why not somebody just say, you know what? Why don't we go to somebody's house and have a black cinema holiday movie night and we potluck it? It's simple. It's still the holiday spirit. You still with your girls. You're enjoying it. But what you won't enjoy is overspending something you should not have spent. <laughs> That's when you're laying up at night and you're like, I don't know why I can't sleep. Because you know you owe them folks that money. <laughs> and, and, and again, and it's going to disrupt you. Because you think about it. If you're, if you're really going into the next decade with debt, and, and a lot of times I often challenge people who have high credit card balances, do you know what you bought on that credit card? Yes. And most people don't. They go, well, I can remember a few things, but, but just start listening out. How, how does the balance get so high? Because a lot of times what happens is on credit card, we are spending the income gap of the lifestyle we're trying to live. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, I know there's certain people now that you know, before they go to a party, they're like, oh, I got to go get my makeup done. Really? We, we, we paying folks to put stuff on our face now? Absolutely. Sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I'm just, but you know what? Here's the thing, though. If you can afford it without it costing you your future, without it costing you your legacy, enjoy it. But don't reward yourself with a lifestyle you haven't earned yet. Because you'll never get there. Say that again for the people in the background. <laughs> don't reward yourself with a lifestyle you haven't earned yet. And this is, I want to ask a question. Yeah, now yeah. you're talking about um, earnings. Because mm -hmm. part of financial discipline is earnings. We always talk about the spending. Do you have any tips for, I guess, going into the new year? Some things we could do to maybe expand our income so we can. Yes, that's a that's a good question because you're right. We always focus on you know the the spending and what we can subtract, but Correct. maybe we just need to just add to what's coming into the household. Good question. Well, you know, I think we're very resourceful women, and we can find something that someone will pay us for outside of our employer. I think everybody needs a side hustle, a side gig, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A, a side something, because he, here's the thing. Um, sometimes the only answer is income. Mm -hmm. that, some, that's, just, that's just the only answer. You, you, you gotta work with income. You know, and then of course, because you can, you can cut back so much to where there's nothing to cut back, and then, you're still the angry person going to work because your money's already spent. So, so payday is no yippee for you. It's like, Ooh, yeah, yeah, this is already gone. And you know that, and that's a very, very hard thing to realize. If you think about it like this, you know, generations ago, people rented rooms. That's what the millennials are doing now. They don't rent apartments anymore. They just rent a room in somebody's house. You know, they, um, and, and they scare me, don't get me wrong, they scare me with a little of their uh, side hustles. Oh, I let somebody rent my car while I'm at work. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so some of their little side hustles cause me a little, I don't know if I can do that. But again, it's being smart and resourceful. You have to think about it. I mean, if you think about our grandparents, you know, how they went to work and then ironed on the weekends and, and, and did things to make things do, planted a garden. Um, it's up to you to figure out what to cut. And I think the thing about it is, is when you go through that process for yourself, you feel empowered because you made those choices. You know, to make more money, to reduce those expenses. You know, uh, it, it's, it's funny, not, not too long ago, um, after Harvey, um, me and my daughter and my husband were in an apartment in Katy, and there was a particular situation where we knew of someone who didn't have, 
any means for, for um, anything. And so we were talking about it and my daughter asked me, she said, mom, what would you do? I said, well, I said, we'd all be in a one bedroom efficiency. We'd have food, clothing and shelter. And then we'd start rebuilding. But you don't have people who are willing to cut it that far back in order to, to jump that far ahead. You know, um, I, I just think that some people just, I had a client once that um, he, didn't, he didn't work at Enron, but he worked for a company that supported Enron. And he had very big luxury vehicles, lives in a great neighborhood and all that stuff. And uh, he said to me, you know what? I'm selling both cars. I'm buying a house cash and I'm going to wait till this thing blows over. There were two things that they got to negotiate as a team, husband and wife team. He said he did not want to give up his country club dues because he felt that that was his next next in terms of employment was keeping that circle together. And she said, I don't want to go back to work because she wasn't work. She was a stay at home mom and I want the kids to stay in private school. So they cut everything to have those three things work within their budget. Three years later, they were back on top. Moved to Denver, got another big job with another big title and all. But I'm just saying, that's the kind of smart thing to do. We were laughing because what we said is sometimes other people, you know, they sit in the living room with a shotgun telling them, baby, not come pick up my car. Yeah. Knowing you can't pay the note. And he was able to make those transition while his credit was high, the news was fresh. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we need to make transitional moves to save ourselves yeah. as opposed to going down with the ship. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, another thing too for making that extra income for the new year, we do a lot of things for free. We have a lot of natural talents and gifts that we have and people come to us for certain things and we would do it for free because, you know, it's easy. Why not? You know, that could be something you can start charging for. Like if you're that person that everybody comes to to plan a party, you know what, sis, I'm going to charge you a good hundred dollars. Is that okay? You know, you yes. know what I'm saying? So that's a way to make that extra money as well. I mean, you can do all types of things. Absolutely. You know, you can do Uber delivery, you could do, you know, Uber period, Lyft. I mean, there are shift. different, shift, yeah, there are different things that you can do to earn money. It's just all about what it is that you're comfortable with and what you're willing to do and what sacrifice you're willing to make because that's where the time comes in exactly. for, you know, for, for sacrifice. And then Mia, to, to your question about um, finding the balance between paying off debt and, you know, um, investing into your business, you know, look at it, investing into your business, look at it as, a risk because when you pay off debt and when you just make risk in general when it comes to investing in the stock market or whatever that's a level of risk for that right mm -hmm. so investing in your business looking at it that way that's a level of of risk so it's still you know you investing in, in you and to make more income so I wouldn't necessarily look at it as a as a bad thing no. you know but I don't know put a little bit towards the business and then a little bit towards the debt you know, and then if you just invest in your business now, girl, you're gonna blow up in about four years. You can pay, pay all that off, so you're gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you know, big guy, we're gonna, you know, he, he asks my line, so I'm gonna put that in for you. So, so yeah, but thank you so much, guys. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell, tell everybody where they can find you online. Perfect. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, the, my Facebook page is Personal Wealth Strategies, and personal is spelled P-U-R-S-E-N-A-L. As in purse. As in purse. Because <laughs> I believe I'm a personal wealth strategist. And um, I'll give you guys my contact information. You can also reach me at um, JaniceWGriffin at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. If you want to just shoot me a quick email or hit me up on Facebook, mm -hmm. I'm there to help. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have um, contact information for you. I'll be passing it out. Yeah, she didn't bring business cards.
Thank you, Janice. Thank you Thank once you. again. Thank you, everybody, for watching online. Wish you guys was here. Yes. Wish you guys was here. But if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and we'll just double back around and answer all your, your questions and your comments. So thank you so much for joining in today, and I'm going to let you guys go. Bye. Love you, sis, for joining in from Virginia.